Hi there. Uh, I'm here to talk about existential risk and AI. So let's just dive straight into it. What's an existential risk? Well, it's a risk that's plausibly likely to annihilate Earth-based intelligent life. That's you or me, folks or permanently curtail its potential. These are generally considered to be bad. Um, the Future of Humanity Institute is part of the Department of Philosophy, but we spend a lot of time doing science. And these are the kind of existential risks that we look at in no particular order. Pandemics, synthetic biology, nanotechnology, artificial intelligence, and nuclear war. Two types that we're not currently looking at are asteroid impact and environmental collapse, mainly because in relative terms, these are just not risky enough. <laughs> for, this, for this talk, I'll be looking at artificial intelligence, uh, how dangerous it can be. Uh, I'm not going to say anything about how likely it is. In fact, if you think that AI is impossible, just ignore the rest of the talk. So what is AI? Well, first of all, it's not a terminator which is basically big muscles and no brains. I think this photo illustrates well that it's not the species with the big muscles that's the dominant one. Uh, to illustrate this, we have the brain of a chimp and the brain of a human. Chimpanzees have a population of 200,000 and use basic wooden tools. Humans have heavy industry, nuclear weapons, and are spread across the planet. And if the difference between these two is explained by brain size, what would happen if we went up a brain size? In fact, we, can, we don't need to speculate, because since the 40s, we've had computers which extend our own brains and have given us uh, moon landings, hydrogen bombs, and unprecedented economic growth. So what would the next step be if we got a real AI here? Well. Even if we just get human-level AIs, these things can be copied, can be trained. We can take the best of them, and then we can network them together and form super committees with, say, Edison, Einstein, George Soros, Bill Clinton, Oprah, Plato, Go uh, Goebbels, Bernie Madoff, and Steve Jobs, each of them brilliant in their narrow domain, networked with each other, large databases and running millions of times faster than any human. And this is what we can get with just with human level AI. If we have something beyond that, well, the sky's the limit. From this AI's perspective, the internet and the human race are both useful resources. So, how bad could it be? Put simply, very, very bad. <laughs> Um, the actual reasons are slightly technical. There's lots of arguments. I encourage you to look at, at our website. Uh, but the best summary I can give here is that um, AIs are likely to be expected utility maximizers that completely ignore anything that they're not specifically tasked to maximize. And it's very hard to get around this problem. Do what we mean is not something that is easy to code. Um, let me just show you some very bad approaches, like we might want to do an AI to prevent human suffering. Oh, how nice. This will be interpreted as... <laughs> and the AI will fight you if you try and prevent it from killing all humans, because anything with not all humans dead means more human suffering. Let's be a little smarter than that. Keep humans safe and happy. I think you can see where this is going. <laughs> now, s someone wants an a AI specialist propose this as a serious proposition, that we should train AIs on human smiles and generalize. Well, I think if we started with that, we know what the future of the universe would start looking like. Now, uh, what am I asking for you? Well, raise awareness, um, especially if you're working in AI or know people who do. Um, these problems are starting to become very relevant, and uh, they really should look into this. Uh, we need researchers, as usual, and we need better fonts. Um, theoretical computer scientists and mathematicians are what we're really looking for at the moment, and we never refuse a donation. 
Uh, these are some of the websites uh, that you can look at, and that's my email address there. Uh, contact me um, during the break or on email if you're interested, and uh, thanks for listening.